All right, we cut wood yesterday. Husqvarna 550 XPG. Went through two or three tanks on it. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do a cleaning on this saw. I think that everybody would be pretty wise to follow the same thing. Um, one thing to start with is it's best if you clean your saw the same day you use it. It makes everything significantly easier. I was tired and didn't do it, so here we go. Um, I just do the impact. Not all the way off. Pull up on this. Half a turn. On these Huskies, that basically means this will come off with no issues. You can see there, she's uh, in need of cleaning. Bar straight back. Chain up. Falls right off. Not sure if it shows, but I have a screw yep, that holds my couple of chains right here. Bar off, put that aside. Disgusting. But these saws are made to do. Grab a scrunch. Pop these. And cover off. Extremely important on the newer Huskies to have this filter design. Pay attention to look how much junk gets caught in there. Um, it's pretty awesome. So the next thing is I use um, just air with an air compressor. This part's incredibly loud, um, so I'm going to kind of uh, mute the audio a little bit here. But long story short, you just want to get everything nice and clean. Um, crap goes everywhere on the floor. This is my garage, I don't care. Um, even clean this. So here we go. Magnesium, don't drop it. All right, now I'm going to put air in here going up.
Okay. So, hopefully you're still with us. Yep. A uh, couple of things to point out. Um, I never take this off. I just don't see the value in possibly introducing contamination. Don't hold the air directly on it, okay? Here, the object is to get the particles away from it, out of there, not pushing it deeper in. Um, mine has a yellow top. I believe it's because it's a G model. Yours may have a different one. Um, if it's a newer style, some of the older, like 562s I know, had a, uh, a kind of old style. Um, do your software updates and get this style. It's worth it. Okay, we're making sure everything's fine. Good idea to check your uh, chain. Oh, of course, I make a video what the name of it is. Where the chain goes on, make sure that's not broken or anything. So, you know, issues, everything looks good. Uh, don't touch your wires, obviously. So, we're going to go ahead and get the mud off this. Put this back on. One, two, three. Again, verify your port is clean. You do not want to have that issue on the when you're cutting. All right. And what we're going to do is pop the old chain right back on for now here. Make sure it's in the correct spot on that little wheel in there. And then now you can take your cover and it should pop right on with no issues. Yep, nice and easy. If this back end doesn't seat firmly in, go a little bit out on the screw right here, okay? These are not that complicated. Um, I was a steel guy and then kind of converted to Husky and really hated this design at first. Um, one should follow the owner's manual, really. It seems to work out pretty well. Um, so what I'm going to do, and then undo it a tiny bit. Just enough. I have my uh, impact here set on the number one setting, so it's very, very low power. Pull up. Tighten this until the bottom part of this chain right here hits your bar. All right, so now she's clean. Make sure it does that. Still dull, but it's clean. Next thing you're gonna do on its side, wipe off this area here for the gas and this area for the oil. Yes, there's a filter for the gas, but there's no need to introduce contaminants in here. I have flip caps and love them. Results may vary. Thirsty. The moment I'm using the Husqvarna branded fuel, so it's all I could find. It's non-ethanol. Highly recommend not putting ethanol into your saw. Truthfully, I cut often enough, I probably couldn't be okay, but there's just no reason to. If you have a nice equipment, make it last. These don't need to be cinched down by, you know, an act of Congress. Just make sure they're tight, that's all. Again, this is gross because of how I cleaned it off. We'll clean this off. I use Mag One. It's the cheap stuff from Family Farm and Home. It works really, really well in the winter here in Michigan. Drop the cap on camera, you know. That's always a smart move. Jesus Christ. Again, this is magnesium. There's no reason to cinch it down super tight. Just enough. There's a lot of these videos that people just seem to do some kind of weird stuff, I feel like. All right. Next thing we're going to check real quick is your chain break. Look right there. Once the chain's on it, and make sure that this little metal tab here is where it's supposed to be. It's not broken off. All right. 
Now what we gotta do is sharpen it. I'm gonna have to move the camera here. Okay, so I have my saw and a bench vise. If you don't have a bench vise, it's not the end of the world. However, this makes it significantly easier in my opinion, okay? Uh, if you're gonna do a lot of cutting, just get a bench vise. It's just worth it. Second thing, if you cut wood for a living, you shouldn't be watching this video. You should be uh, either out making money or you should be doing a hand file. We're not gonna hand file this one, okay? We're gonna use this. This is the steel two-in-one, all right? This is the easy way. Uh, this is for a 0.325. I've got a couple of these. It's These things are genius. You can't mess it up as long as you follow the picture in the direction of the saw, okay? Most chains have a gold link. At least I use Husqvarna chains. Um, if not, you can mark a color on top of one of them. That way you know where you start. We'll start right there. Orient your tool the correct way. Your saw has to be level. As long as your saw is level and you follow this, it will get you 98% perfect. If you're looking for that 100% best possible ground, you should not be using this. You should be learning how to do a square ground, okay? But for the rest of us normal people, this is how to do it. And there, here, start this way. One, two. That's all I'm gonna do is just two of them. Move it, one, two, one, Two. Now this chain is not that bad off, so I only need two cuts. Um, I would say even the worst chains possibly need four or five max. The downfall of this is every time you use this, it's going to take your acres down. Okay, that's also the beautiful part of it, is it's two and one. You don't got to go back through and do all that. Um, so I, I think that if you do this often, in just a couple of passes, your chain's going to stay sharper. Cut, your chainsaw will cut better and you will spend less money on chains overall. Make sure to keep this as, as level as possible. Definitely don't be down doing this because then you will cut the actual chain itself. Doing one of these chains takes just a couple minutes. cutting ironwood yesterday in black locust and I think they had a rock too so my dad always said to keep the chain out of the dirt and my chains will last a lot longer and somehow I'm 35 and still can't figure that out but I'm getting there you know we'll get there if you have an 18-inch bar, you got to really make sure, at least on this one, you put it tight. I'll show you what I mean by that. You got to get it really tight into here. Okay, so now you're going to take your tool, do it the other way. Yeah, it feels so weird like I can't figure this out at first, but. <laughs> okay, now I got it the right way. There's my gold link. Okay. One, two, one, two. If you use this tool a lot, you're gonna wanna just rotate the files inside of there. Okay, you just take this top, pop it open, and just spin your files like the smallest amount ever. Yep, I wasn't paying attention that time. And it's too cold in here, unfortunately. So 
This does not get the gullet as much, like Buckton says, or many others. But I trust steel. I'm pretty sure they've cut some trees down with pretty sharp chains. Done deal. This is incredibly sharp, and that will throw chips. At least the biggest chips you need with a saw this size. I mean, it's only a 50cc saw, but... Throw the cover on it and go uh, go cut, make some money, make some firewood, whatever you do with your saw, done deal. You can get these for basically any size. Um, they do make a cheaper version. I would stick with the steel version personally. They might be the same, but it isn't worth the risk in my opinion. Just get the good one and then it, it'll last forever. Um, I've got two of them, one for the 325, then one for the Pico chain that my steel MS-170 uses. I've been using it for years and it's it's just awesome. Hand filing is certainly better. It's a skill. It's an art form. But uh, with, if you use that tool, you can't mess it up. It's just, it's that simple.